right, so this is our very quick impromptu. We came up with this idea of a couple interns, Matt and Mike. This is our quick little impromptu podcast that we hope to do this a lot more often to bring more content out for you guys, show you who the drivers are, get their little, little bit of personality out there for them. And our first guest today is Mike Sweeney. How's it going? So Mike's on here. Um, we're just going to cut right to it. How did you start racing and where where did you start racing? Um, well, everybody knows that we travel like four hours to get here. So we're from a little town called Nesquahoning, which is really close to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. And um, I don't know, second or third grade, met one of my buddies at school and he said his dad had a you know, a dirt street stock, a race car, and I went home with them and checked this race car out, and I became a crew member from that day on and fell in love with racing, so pretty much got my start there, and then, um, you know, helped my buddy when he ran quarter midgets, helped his dad run the dirt street stock stuff, helped a bunch of guys throughout the years, just, you know, just trying to get knowledge, just learning everything I could about racing, and then when I got out of college, I, uh, I eventually just went and bought my own own car and just eventually worked up to where we are now. That's cool. What, uh, what was your first, what was your first race car? What division um, was it in? It was like a hobby stock, uh, factory stock class. I had a 77 Monte Carlo. So big old boat. And, uh, we actually ran two dirt races and then, um, the season was over on dirt. So we transferred it over to asphalt and we ran a couple races with that. And then, that winter we built an, another car and just the next year bought a street stock and built that and started working on that and ran that for two, three years before we got into late model racing. So, and you know, here we are today. That's so cool. That's the dream. Um, so Jennerstown, how did you end up here? What made you come here? Um, well, we, uh, we always would travel out once in a while we didn't really travel a lot just once in a while we'd go up like to the race of champions uh roc race at oswego and we looked at a few big races and we saw that they had the the motor masters out here and the first year we wanted to come out and we just kind of didn't put all the the parts and pieces in the plan to get out here um but i said that's it we got to make sure we do it for next year and then the next year we started talking more and more with guys from out here and, and officials at the track and and billy rebar and stuff and me and him became great friends and next thing you know we're out here racing all the time now all right mike let's go into just a couple questions here so let's do your favorite racing memory um i don't know that i could pick out just one we have a lot um you know obviously a, a first championship when we won at evergreen would have been a highlight but you know we tried so hard to win a race here and and winning my first race here was was just something that not a lot of guys from my area would be able to travel out here and battle the guys out here and do so that was that was pretty important mm. pretty special to me so evergreen speedway is your home track or? um we don't really have a home track um we run a lot back home before we came out to Jennerstown, we would run a lot of Mahoning Valley Speedway. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually the all-time win leader still there. That's awesome. At, at that track. We don't really run there um, anymore. Um, so we do run Evergreen still when we're not racing at Jennerstown. Um, you know, we actually have two wins there this season already. That's um, cool. So we just got to gotta nail down our Jennerstown set up a little bit and get going out here and get some more races out here that we can run. and. Uh, try to knock down a win and uh you know then maybe that one will be my favorite race in memory there you go so like you you travel all these different tracks mm -hmm. like what's the biggest changes that you have to make to your car like the differences in like the tr different tracks i mean they're all short track ovals but yep so back home the the tracks are real small um when we come out here we call this the big track you know mm -hmm. and it might not be to a lot of guys but we're used to racing quarter miles uh, Evergreen's a third mile, so they're real tight bull rings. Um, you know, they don't have as much asphalt on their racetrack as we do here in in pit mm -hmm. lane. You know, so it's a uh, it's very tight racing here. It's a little more, a little more give and take, a little more room to race. Mm -hmm. um, you know, different lines to run. So it everything, each track is unique and has its unique setup. So we change a lot from track to track. That's cool. So. Let's do 
we're going to switch it up I, since I have them in the wrong order. Mm -hmm. But let's do, since we're doing racing related, then we'll end on the, on the non-racing thing. But if you could race any car in the world on any track in the world from a late model to a NASCAR cup car to a Formula One, anything, what would, what would, what would your dream, dream uh, track day be anyway? You know, that's, that's a real tough question. Um, you know, coming from where we came from and, and I worked hard to get to where we're at, I mean, I'm perfectly fine running late models at Jennerstown Speedway, but I maybe, you know, everybody's dream, you know, is a cup car, um, you know, if you're an asphalt guy, or um, I know I definitely wouldn't be any good at it, but, you know, a sprint car at like Eldora or something like that would be, be pretty wild to try. That would be cool. I don't know. Those dirt guys are pretty crazy, though. Yeah, the Chili Bowl would be another mm -hmm. really cool event, I think that would be, you know, neat to run or try, mm. um, you know, even though coming from an asphalt background, I don't know, I know I wouldn't be any good at it, but, um, you know, that might be something pretty neat to try. That just looks like a, a real fun week yeah. out there at the Chili Bowl. That's, I, I mean, I would love to race something. I would race a go-kart. <laughs> <laughs> so, so our last one here, and then we'll let you go uh, back down to your campground here. Um, other than racing, what do you like to do? Um, Honestly, what? I don't do do a whole lot. Uh, you know, I spend time with my wife and my daughter. Um, you know, going out to eat or doing different things like that. Um, you know, winter time I do a little bit of hunting um, for deer, deer hunting. But other than that, I mean, we're twenty four seven, three sixty five racing um, in the shop all the time. If I'm not working on my car, you know, we have other people that we help out. We'll work on their cars. Um, you know, so it's a uh, it's all about racing pretty much full time with me. Other than like I said, a little bit of hunting, and whenever I get time, you know, we we spend time with my daughter and my wife. That's cool. Racing is a can it'll, it'll take it up. It'll take time <laughs> up if if you let it. So boundaries yeah. are good. But yeah, other than that, that was fun. It's awesome to get to know you a little bit more. I know I've seen you down around the track and stuff. Yep. But just to sit down and have a little bit of a conversation for I don't know which camera we're using. This camera we're using. <laughs> um, just for. Just, just for anybody listening in at home, uh, sitting in the stands doing anything, just to, to get to know the drivers better. Yep. It helps people cheer people on. And then, no, it's knows. great. You know, the fans come down after the races are over mm -hmm. and get to come see us. So, you know, everybody's welcome to come down and talk to me anytime they want. That's awesome. All right, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck next time you're here. All right. Thank you. <laughs>